What's good guys, this is Chris from weartesters.com. Today we got the performance review on these bad boys right here. This is the Why Not Zero Two. This is a fantastic sneaker. So the traction on these guys, much like I had initially thought, is fantastic. This circle stuff just works. I, I just love this. If you're not going to use herringbone, circles are the way to go. I've said this many times before, mostly with the curry stuff. But these circle patterns just do exactly what you would think that they do, and they just kind of cover in multiple angles. So it doesn't matter if you're going, you know, with linear movements or lateral movements. It doesn't matter if you're jab stepping or stepping back. These guys right here are taking care of your movements, no problem. There was no issue, by the way, with that little size tag in the back. I know that everybody like kind of like made a big deal about it but no wasn't a problem they played just fine the only downside is that the rubber is definitely soft even for it being solid so I would not recommend these for outdoors if you're looking for something that's going to last you a long time they do work well outdoors but again they're just not gonna last they're on the soft side I can already see a lot of these little like suction cup looking portions especially on my high wear areas because everybody has different strike zones of their shoe but in my high wear areas they're already kind of like fraying off and stuff like that so if they're doing that just with indoor use only then and they're probably gonna just get obliterated on the concrete. Now the cushion itself is isolated to the forefoot as far as the actual tech specs are concerned and we have unlocked zoom air in the forefoot area much like the Air Jordan 33. It's the same exact unit that they use in both shoes. They also have the moderator plate on top of that as well so a little like TPU panel which is what you can kind of see peeking out through the midsole and this is known as the flight plate or flight speed system. They've been using this since the Air Jordan 28 and it works man. It just it's awesome. They've been using it almost every year. Actually, they have been using it every year, right? The 28, the 29, 30. The 31 was a little different because that was full length cushion. But then back to the 32, just like this and all that stuff. So yes, they've been using this type of unlock setup for a number of years now, and it works fantastic. This guy right here though is combined with injected phylon, which is the fluffy stuff. So cute and fluffy. <laughs> which I really like. So Phylon is EVA. EVA sounds basic to a lot of people, which it is, it's just a standard foam. But injected Phylon is a different way of making the EVA, or they also call it injected EVA. And then there's compression molded EVA or compression molded Phylon. The compression stuff is very dense, it's compact, it does last longer, but it also, you know, doesn't feel good. And this guy right here doesn't last quite as long. You can see all of the compression lines in it. Because it's on the softer side, it's on the bouncier side. So if you're looking for a better underfoot feel, this type of foam is where it's at. Again, they're not gonna last forever, but no shoe should. That's just not how they make them. They don't make anything to last forever. Correct, yeah, somebody had mentioned in one of the comments, I can't remember what video it was, but they were just like, they should make a shoe that just lasts, right? And I was just like, but then like, where's the business plan in that? I think that was on the Adapt BB, saying that they're using their resources the wrong way. Yeah, and that they should just make a sustainable shoe that like you buy the shoe one time, right? And then like, that's it. And I'm just like, okay, so like if everybody in the world buys that one shoe, that's great for that one shoe, but what's gonna keep them coming back? That's not a, a business model to like abide by. If you're looking for court feel and impact protection, this is pretty much where it's at. Zoom Air is awesome. It also feels better, in my opinion, than the 33. The 33 was very stiff to start. These guys, as soon as you put them on, you can definitely tell that there's a difference between the two, and these just feel bouncy right away. Now, the materials on these guys feature mesh at the forefoot, knit at the midfoot, and then a little bit of like a mixture between the two on the cloak, is what I like to call it, the little cape thingy. And I have no complaints with the way that the materials play. I have no complaints with how they fit or anything like that. I think that they are pretty much standard for what we're kind of like getting used to nowadays in the era of textiles and mesh. There's a fused little strip right here at the toe box for you know durability of the high wear area so that you're not ripping through that material. Everything else though is pretty much standard. Nothing to see here. It just works. The fit on these guys in my opinion is true to size. If you're a wide footer I would recommend trying them on just to be sure that they fit you properly. And then the lockdown on these guys I thought was very good especially at the midfoot. You do have this little midfoot strap. These guys right here are independent so they kind of will flap out. And then when you lace everything up you can definitely feel them closing and hugging around the midfoot section of your foot this little finger thing right there i think it's cool i didn't feel like it did anything you know substantial it's by itself it's one little finger is that the proper kinda, name for it no hell no i just make it my own <laughs> Yeah, it's, it looks like a finger. It's like you got all of your fingers up here, right? And then your pinky's down there. You, you know look like thing? you're holding an instrument. But that's what I'm saying though, is that like, 
I see it. And together they're great. If you take things and individualize them, this is good. This is just this. <laughs> now the cloak area is something that a lot of people are like asking about because it looks like it's unnecessary. It's just like this big old extra piece and everything. There is an eyelet in there and there's one underneath it. I don't feel like it did anything really like crazy. I, it could have been there, it could have not been there. It's just, it's there to me. I don't feel like it's anything worth really noting. I think that the overall lockdown, like I was saying, is good. There were some times when I would move in the shoe a little bit like too hard and it would feel like I'm sliding in this one section. And I, I wouldn't say it's because of either of these two eyelets. I think it was more so my socks with the interior liner. Some socks for whatever reason are slick in there and then others were not. The overall support is very similar to something that you would have found a long time ago in the Air Jordan 28 and the Air Jordan 29, with the exception of it's a little bit better than those. Uh, they've definitely learned from those models and they've adapted that decoupledness or whatever that you want to call it, the decoupled like midsole. They've beefed things up to the point to where it's doing everything. It's catering to the support that you need in the shoe while still maintaining all of that flexibility up front and that mobility. These ones are not as maneuverable. Like those shoes, like you can really twist up and all that stuff. And this one, you definitely can't because the plate underneath it is substantial, but the forefoot movement and the rear movement are separate pieces. So I think that that's awesome. So you still get all that free flowingness up front with all of the support that you need in the back, keeping you on the footbed, keeping you caged in. I think that that's great. Again, the overlays, the paneling, all of this stuff plays into not just design, but it's actually functional for performance. It's doing all of that heavy lifting, keeping your foot onto the footbed again. The one thing that I wish that they did have is a real outrigger. These guys like the 33s, they're not super rounded, but they're a little bit kind of like te tipsy. Yeah, tipsy, teetery. Like they, you can tell that they, they move and lean in ways that I don't like. They do have that TPU plate in there to kind of like remedy that. But again, I wish that it was just a little bit more stable. That does though promote a lot of mobility on the forefoot. It kind of promotes a lot of speed in the play. And I like more stability, which is you lose a little bit of speed, but not anything to where I feel like it would like severely like, like if you're fast, you're just going to be fast. Like I've seen John Wall playing bricks and the dude's fast. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that it's gonna hurt your performance all that much. So for me personally, I would like to see a little bit more stability in the forefoot area, like what they did with the fly lockdown. But with this guy right here, again, if you're looking for a fast feeling shoe, this is one of those shoes right here. You just, you feel like you're just moving. And that pretty much takes care of it for the performance review on the Jordan. Why not? Zero two. The shoe is awesome. The retail price I think is just right. Uh, it's a signature shoe, but it plays like anybody playing it. This thing is just awesome. 2019 is starting out as a good year. That's how I feel like every year within the past like seven years, I would say, where like the beginning is just a hit, a hit, a hit, and then it kind of slows and boom, that like right towards the end of the year when you think, because like we make our mid-year list like right around, around in June, and I always say things are going to change. This is just so far for a reason because as soon as the new basketball season starts, the new stuff comes out. And those are the ones that like they save almost the best for last. Yeah. And if these are this good, I just, I'm curious what they got coming. So, and this, like I said, this is like the beginning of the, just the year. We're not even talking about the basketball season. This is mid season. This is just a, this is a trip. They did a great job. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. If you need any more information, links are going to be in the description box below. It'll head you over to Wear Tester where you can find out their price, their weight, and their score. Let us know what you guys think about these down below in the comment section. Have you played in them yet? Actually, this is the only colorway that's released. Yes. There's going to be a lot more colorways, but they need to do better on making sure that everybody that wants to play in a pair can. There's nothing more frustrating being a basketball player and not being able to find a basketball shoe. I get the whole limited thing, but when we're talking about performance, like I just, I don't know. Don't make the launch way limited. You want the people to what? get launch way. Sorry, launch colorway. Colorway be limited because you want people in your shoes. That's what I'm saying. And then, then with your random colorways, make those limited for the choosy people. I think that the special edition colorways should be limited. I do feel that when it comes to performance, shoes. I don't feel that there is room for that limited availability crap. Leave that for the hype beast. Let basketball players play basketball in the shoes that you make for them. But this is a great shoe. Again, thank you so much for everything, for watching, tuning in, hitting the like button if you did, which I hope that you did. Subscribing because, you know, that helps. And until next time, guys, have a good one. I think your cloak is like a statement piece. It's like popping your collar. I guess. Some colorways of this shoe look so damn good. They're doing a really good job with it. This shoe really takes color really well, and it's not, uh, this has absolutely nothing to do with 
with performance but you know this shoe in this funky ass colorway looks kind of cool yeah. but then in like the regular colorways that normally are just attractive on their own they look really cool and i really dig it i think it's because even if you just mute it down and only do like one or two colors there's so many different textiles panels. it's the paneling yeah that's so what's it miss works. it's this is what's been missing in footwear man they give you fucking socks socks just look like socks it doesn't matter what you print on them it doesn't matter what you sew into them it doesn't matter what color they are man socks just look like socks and all socks look the same it's whack this is cool paneling this is called design it looks like something if you black this shoe out and just make it a silhouette you can instantly say i know what shoe that is because they're funky if you take any of these sock shoes and you black them out and you just have the silhouette nobody knows what they are they all look the same this is what the basketball sneakers have been missing man this guy needs to i'm not going to say his name but I know who designed this shoe. This guy needs to design the flagship. The 34? Yeah, the, he need, and he's not, but like he needs to. This is the next step. He's been designing some of their badass team shoes. The, the ones that I'm like, yo, like I can't believe these play so good. And then they leveled him up and they gave him this shoe, right? Which is a signature, which is a big deal for a new designer. He's new at the company, like fairly new. It's not like brand new, but like he's still pretty new. He's still, I would say he's like, you know, in, in comparison to like everybody else, he's still on that like kind of like rookie level. Okay. But he's killing it. 